Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. In today's video, I wanted to talk about how the design of the original T-Rex in the Jurassic Park franchise has changed over the years. Now, before we dive into today's topic, I want to make it clear that this video is only going to be discussing the individual Tyrannosaur that made its first appearance in the original Jurassic Park movie. This is the same individual that would later be seen in both Jurassic World and Fallen Kingdom. Appearances in media like the Topps comic books or even the Telltale game will not be discussed. This is because they exist in different forms of media, and it can be kind of difficult and unfair to compare them to the films when they're undeniably being stylized for their respective entries. So to simplify things, I'm only going to be talking about the movies in this video. So our first on-screen depiction of the T-Rex from Isla Nublar of course comes from the original Jurassic Park movie. Specifically, the first time that we ever see the animal on screen, it's being portrayed by one of Stan Winston's animatronics. This animatronic design was of course drawn up by concept artist Crash McCreary and built a few years ahead of principal photography for the film. Being based on Michael Crichton's novel, Stan Winston's depiction of the animal differs a bit from what readers can find in the original book, but the overall impression and feel is still there. Our first look at the T-Rex reveals to us that the on-screen dinosaur will be covered in brown scales instead of the more reddish brown from the novel. Its head is noticeably massive, and the shots where you can see the animal in frame with the actors really gives you the sense of scale and reality that can only come from a character that was built for the set. For the entire duration of the main road attack that takes place in the middle of the movie, this design of the Rex would get cut together with footage from its CGI counterpart, which, contrary to popular belief, is not 100% identical to the Stan Winston model. Now, the following information that I'm going to be using comes directly from an industrial light and magic interview. Here, Jeff Campbell, the digital creature model supervisor for Jurassic World, talks about the Tyrannosaurus Rex design specifically from the original Jurassic Park movie. I had a few reservations about this original maquette we were scanning because on the original Jurassic Park, Steven Spielberg had made several changes with Steven Williams, the ILM artist who built the original digital T-Rex. Those changes differed from the Winston maquette. The arms were a different length, and the feet on the digital version were larger and stockier. Also, the head of the digital model had the jaw more streamlined as well as some adjustments to the angle of the eyes. Now, when watching the original Jurassic Park movie, it might be a little difficult to point out these differences if you were unaware of their existence. But a really good way that I personally use to tell the two apart is to just look at the front of their snouts. If you look at these two images of the Tyrannosaurus Rex designs head on, you can tell they're different without knowing any of the specific details that Industrial Light and Magic mentioned in that interview. Most notably, the tooth placement and number of teeth in the dinosaur's head are not identical to one another. Now, I've heard that they didn't really have any way to completely scan the original Stan Winston maquette into the computer in 1993 like they do nowadays. So that could also be a factor in why these two designs don't always match up. Between the two of them, I personally prefer Stan Winston's model. There's just something about the way it looks and the few shots that it is utilized in the final film that really stand out to me. I love everything about it. That's not taking anything away from the CGI model though because it too is a pretty awesome design and was obviously the final one made on the first film with input from Steven Spielberg. It's also in far more iconic shots than the animatronic, so most people probably think of this design as the T-Rex in the first movie. <laughs> Now fast forward 22 years later and the same Rex would appear yet again in Jurassic World. This model also shows some pretty distinct differences from both designs that we see in the original Jurassic Park. Jeff Campbell spoke about this animal's design in the same interview that I mentioned above. And believe it or not, a lot of the decisions they made on the animal in this film were done because of the differences between Stan Winston's animatronic as well as the altered digital version. 
Most of the T-Rex shots in the original Jurassic Park were digital models, although there were the Stan Winston practical models for a number of close-up shots. But even starting from the original ILM digital model posed a number of challenges. The first was maintaining the look and feel of the original T-Rex while aging her 23 years. We didn't have access to the original models or castings which were all in LA, but we did have a four-foot original casting that had been made for us back in 1992 and which sits on display in our San Francisco studio. I made a suggestion that we scan that model as a starting point for recreating the Winston model. Steve Jubenweil, Martin Murphy, and Landis Fields grabbed an old Next Engine scanner and tripod, and along with Greg Grusby, the head of ILM Publicity, we pried open the plexiglass case and started scanning that model. This provided Steve with a great template for the new model. Steve made the sculptural changes and alterations to create a T-Rex that was somewhere in between the digital original and the practical model. As it turns out, that was just the beginning. Tim and Glenn suggested we take into account that she'd been incarcerated in a theme park for all those years and her muscles would have atrophied somewhat. We also considered that she would be showing signs of stress, but most of all, she needed to remain recognizable as the heroic statuesque T-Rex from the original movie. So apart from the merging of the original Jurassic Park T-Rex designs, it looks like Jurassic World's big contribution to the animal was bringing her into the present day. Making the T-Rex look old and weathered from the realistic number of years that have passed was an idea that I think does pay off in the long run. But it also gives me what I personally consider to be the weakest looking T-Rex in the series. And I mean, it technically is the weakest Rex since its muscles have atrophied so much from being confined in the theme park. So I think that's a pretty understandable assessment for me to make. It does look like the original Rex, or at least it looks the best it can since it was based off of two different versions of the same animal. But in the end, I think having a T-Rex without the build and size of the first movie just isn't as intimidating. <laughs> Flash forward just three years later in Fallen Kingdom, and the Rex is looking much bigger in comparison. Here we can see that the Tyrannosaur has a lot more size to it, and its muscles have returned, giving the animal quite the powerful appearance in several key scenes in the movie. Fallen Kingdom would also mark the return of the T-Rex, being portrayed by both a CGI and animatronic model for the film. In doing so, the team of people over at ILM, as well as Neil Scanlon's practical effects team, work together in order to make the creature's VFX transitions as seamless as possible. In a 2018 interview with production visual effects supervisor David Vickery, the man had this to say about the Tyrannosaur's design in the movie. We baked incredible detail from ILM's highest resolution texture maps into the posed digital models so that with the dinosaur at 1-1 scale, each polygon was no larger than one square millimeter. This resulted in some truly huge 3D files with hundreds of millions of polys. Neil Scanlon took those files and 3D printed them at full scale, and this formed the basis for his animatronic models. It meant that we could guarantee the authenticity of the animatronics. When it came to post, we were able to line up our 3D pose dinosaurs with the animatronic and almost perfectly register every single scale on the digital dinosaur with its animatronic counterpart. It made the job of seamlessly blending the digital and practical models possible and was a huge contributing factor to the success of the collaboration between Neil's team and our team at Industrial Light and Magic. In my opinion, the overall look and feel of the Rex in Fallen Kingdom is the best the animal has looked in a very, very long time. I'm pretty sure it's implied that, with her no longer being confined to her small, cumbersome paddock, she's been able to roam Isla Nublar freely, and in doing so, take down prey that is significantly larger than those tiny goats that Jurassic World used to feed her. I love seeing the Tyrannosaur's muscles back in the movie, and in keeping with the continuity of her being aged and older with the passage of time, it really makes the animal feel like a formidable and scarred predator that I definitely wouldn't want to mess with. Anyways, that is pretty much all of the intricate differences between each individual design. My favorite is probably always going to be Stan Winston's animatronic because of nostalgic reasons, but honestly, the design that they created in Fallen Kingdom is a pretty close runner-up for me. So, which one of these dinosaur designs do you prefer the most? It wouldn't surprise me if a lot of people prefer the original CGI version, since that's what we see the most in the original Jurassic Park. That kind of iconic status is hard to not love and adore, and I totally understand why anyone would say that that is their favorite model. But hey, whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. 
Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. It really means the world to me that all of you guys enjoy what I do so much, and I'm extremely thankful to have all of your incredible support. Now I'd like to thank all of you for watching today's video, and hope you all enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like, and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. See you all in the next one, guys, and as always, take it easy.